you, you now make a point of, that's, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? We're doing the same thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. And ultimately, it's still going to take time. But I am just as much shocked as Ken is that we have not seen more opportunities. And we're going to have to force change. All right, guys. So we got to talk about the Bud Light boycott, a.k.a. the most successful boycott in history because a former Anheuser-Busch uh, executive came out and revealed why Bud Light went woke, okay? Why are all these companies going woke, okay? And a lot of people are wondering why because, hey, I haven't really seen much evidence that this stuff helps improve the bottom line, okay? However, uh, apparently what is happening is that there are forces, for example, large asset managers like a Vanguard, like a BlackRock, like an et cetera, lefty investment firms that are actually pushing these companies to go woke despite, despite the fact that going woke isn't necessarily good for the bottom line. And a former Anheuser-Busch executive came out and confirmed that to be the case uh, in a recent interview with Jesse Waters that I want you guys to take a look at. Let's bring in Anson. Frerichs, he's a former Anheuser-Busch executive and co-founder of Strive Asset Management. So how does this actually work? These guys are telling the truth? Jesse, thanks for having me this morning. I mean, here's how it works. It's pretty simple. You just have to follow the money. If you take a look at BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, they manage $20 trillion worth of capital. But it's not their own money. This is the money of everyday citizens, firefighters, police officers, doctors who generally have their money either via 401ks or, in a lot of cases, large pension funds. Large pension funds like the state of California, which manages the largest pension fund in the U.S., and the state of New York, and then European, European pension funds as well. And a lot of the politicians in those states, in California, for example, they recently have mandated those large pension funds that they divest from things like fossil fuels and oil and gas. And then when, when Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York, was there, did the same thing. But they also tell BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, if they're going to manage their money, they have to commit to things like ESG, diversity, equity, inclusion, and adopt firm-wide commitments that they therefore then force onto all the major companies in corporate America. So the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, says to a BlackRock, we're not going to send you our $100 billion state pension if you're going to invest in ExxonMobil. We're only going to send it to you guys if you guys are going to invest it in woke companies. And then that's what these places do. They invest it in these woke companies. They make them woker. And then everybody gets paid. You left Anheuser-Busch because of some of these shenanigans. What happened there? Oh, I left Anheuser-Busch, not necessarily because of Anheuser-Busch, but a lot of other companies. I was living in Atlanta, for example, during the 2021 time period. And you had uh, the citizens of Georgia. They voted for representatives to make sure we could have election integrity laws. You have to have an ID to vote. And for that ID to vote, this seemed like it was pretty logical law. I was kind of surprised in Georgia didn't have it. But what was crazy to me was that after the fact, BlackRock came out and they said, we're against this law. We think this is bad for democracy. This is bad for society. And they basically then had companies like Coca-Cola, like Delta. Delta, and heck, even Major League Baseball, they canceled an all-star game over this. And when I was seeing this, this was bad for capital markets because instead of these companies just delivering soft drinks or, heck, doing Major League Baseball, they're getting involved in these political issues. That's bad for these companies because they're alienating a lot of their cu customers, as we're seeing right now with firms like Anheuser-Busch. But frankly, it's bad for democracy it's bad as well. Citizens should be able to decide these things through free and fair elections, not necessarily with a small group of asset managers and CEOs that are telling individuals how to live their lives. Yeah, I remember remember when the left used to hate Wall Street and now they love Wall Street because Wall Street's woke just like they are. Yeah. So you seen that you heard that. Um, I hope you guys kind of understand what's going on there. OK, 
in some of these lefty states, like for example, California or New York, you may have the governor or the lefty politicians there basically tell asset managers like Vanguard, like State Street, like BlackRock, hey, we're not going to let you manage our multi-hundred million dollar pensions uh, because um, you invest in companies that we don't like, okay? And therefore, these asset managers are pressured to, I guess, create all the funds, like for example, ESG funds for um, pension funds to be invested into. Okay, and that basically incentivizes companies to go woke, to try to improve their ESG because they may get more capital investment uh, because they're woke, right? The more woke they get, the more likely they are or the easier it is for them to be a part of some ESG fund, which means that they're going to get an influx of capital. That influx of capital is going to elevate the share price and the shareholders, the CEO, uh, they all benefit, right? Even though it may not necessarily be the most profitable thing for a company to do. Uh, again, um, just investing in a company, elevating the share price um, can allow the company to operate with more capital and the executives get paid more, right? And again, this is probably why you're seeing a lot of these companies go woke and commit to far left social initiatives like diversity, equity, and inclusion, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not, again, it's not because of the bottom line. I mean, we they know, okay, the asset managers know uh, that this isn't necessarily good for profits as much as it's good for the agenda. Take a listen. Um, having had the experience of being there, I can say quite confidently that ESG is not as good for investing processes as people claim. And that's very important because it effectively is a financial jargon sort of proxy way of saying, is does it pay to be responsible? The reality is it doesn't pay that much to be responsible. It works in a few instances, in a few strategies. It's being blown out of proportion. And none of it has any real social impact. And it got worrying to me enough that after I left, I left for personal reasons, and I started to wonder if this was, you know, at first I thought this is kind of like giving wheatgrass to a cancer patient, right? The world is uh, suffering from the growth of climate change and other ills. And, you know, wheatgrass is a nicely marketed idea, but there's no reason to believe that it'll help stop the cancer. Yeah. So you've seen that, you heard that. Um, again, that executive who used to work at BlackRock is saying that, look, we don't necessarily know if this is actually a sound way of investing. We don't know if this actually really makes money. OK, but, you know, this is something that we're being told to do. This is what we have to do, because, again, the agenda is more important than the bottom line. And Target is finding out the hard way in regards to the agenda uh, affecting the bottom line as we have some more bad news for Target, okay? Their shares continue to plunge, okay, 2% as market cap down over 13 billion amid pride backlash, okay? So um, their shares continue to fall and now they've actually been downgraded by Wall Street. That is how bad it has gotten for Target that has been subject to a boycott, a conservative boycott due to their pride merchandise. So without further ado, let's go ahead and, and read about this. Target shareholders continue to bear the brunt of the big box retailers pride merchandising controversy as the company fell another 2.03% on Monday. Since the backlash, Target's market value has fallen over 13 billion to 60.24 billion as of Monday's closing price. Uh, Target's market value was over 74 billion before the polarizing pride displays made national news. Target initially irked uh, conservatives with over-the-top pride displays that feature a plethora of children items, but outraged the LGBTQ community when the displays were dialed back uh, ahead of Pride Month. Uh, Monday's decline leads shares at uh, $130.52 per share. The retailer recently suffered nine straight days of losses on the heels of backlash from both sides of the issue. Yeah, so um, this is a full-blown Bud Light situation with Target because you remember, Bud Light pissed off both sides, okay? Gay bars, some in Chicago stopped selling Anheuser-Busch products because they didn't come out and uh, stand behind uh, their Dylan Mulvaney uh, ad, right? They didn't stand behind it. They didn't basically say, hey, you know what? We stand with him. Um, so they got upset. We all know our conservatives were upset. So now, because they tried to uh, ride a fence, 
um, they're getting attacked from both sides, right? And that's what's happening with Target here because they're low-key trying to ride a fence on this. Um, they're suffering from both sides. So let's read here. KeyBank Capital Markets on Monday cut the retailer's shares to sector weight from overweight as the resumption of student loan payments stipulated by Congress's debt ceiling agreement poses a sizable headwind for discretionary spending for shoppers, which has an elevated discretionary sales mix and a younger college-educated core consumer demographic. Yeah, so what it's saying is that it's getting worse for Target because now that Congress has come to this deal on the debt ceiling and people are going to have to start repaying their student loan payments, um, that's going to be less money in the economy uh, for uh, retailers like Walmart or like a Target, okay? A place where people are taking that discretionary income and they're shopping. They now have to use it to pay back their student loans. Therefore, Target will have less sales coming in. That is part of the reason why it's being downgraded. Uh, JP Morgan Chase and company downgraded Target stock last week from overweight to neutral with analysts citing the possibility of a decline in sales due to consumers pulling back spending amid uh, persistent inflation. Uh, Target shares have fallen over 20% during the quarter as the retailer deals with the fallout from its plied uh, merchandising displays. Last month, Target confirmed, quote, adjustments to the pride merchandising plans were on the way after Fox News Digital learned it rolled back displays at some of its locations. A Target uh, insider told Fox News Digital that some southern stores were forced by the corporation to move LGBTQ pride merchandise away from the front of their locations after customer outrage to avoid a, quote, Bud Light situation. The pride merchandise continued to cause problems for Target when many LGBTQ advocates slammed the company for moving the merchandise. Democratic Governor uh, Gavin Newsom even accused Target of participating in a, quote, systemic attack on LGBTQ communities across the country. LGBTQ advocate Heather Hester scolded Target's rainbow capitalism last week. Quote, really what Target ultimately did was show that they were in this just for the money. Hester told Fox News Digital. Yeah, I mean, of course they're in it for the money, right? They're selling this because they think that, one, again, it's going to help them with their ESG scores, and two, they think it's going to help them increase sales, okay? But unfortunately, um, you know, that may not necessarily be the case. Quote, rainbow capitalism is essentially, you know, selling pro products for profit and not necessarily standing behind the community with support has to continue. That's what happened, right? There are a lot of things that go into that but that is what happened at the end of the day. The retailer, which has supported LGBTQ pride for years, this season offered merchandise that included female-style swimsuits that had the option to tuck male genitalia. Other products were labeled as, quote, thoughtfully fit on multiple body types and gender expressions. Target also uh, sold a gender-fluid mug, a variety of adult clothing with slogans such as super queer and a grow-at-your-own-pace saucer planner, in addition to controversial items for kids, including a coloring book that features same-sex couples kissing. Yeah, so Target is in basically free fall, right? The stock, okay? Not only are they suffering from the effects of the boycott, but they're also suffering because... Um, the party's over for people paying back their student loans, right? They have to start paying their money back now because of the recent debt agreement. And now um, they're going to have even more problems, which, again, is hilarious, right? It could not happen to a better company. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.